In today's video, I'm going to attempt to teach you guys 80% of sage in under 20 minutes. Good day, my name is Heinrich, we have my SA County Network and I've been in the accounting industry since 2008. I've been working on sage, I think, since about 2009, so I probably know this program like the back of my hand. In today's video, I want to just attempt it or I want to show you guys how to do the basic stuff about sage in under 20 minutes. So at least you guys can know how to create your invoice where to put your logo in, how to load supply invoices, the basics about banking, and then just the basics about reporting as well. Yeah, so just before I get onto the presentation, remember to give the video a like, remember to hit subscribe, and let me get onto my computer, and I can show you guys what this is about. Yes, so let me quickly show you guys how to do the basics about Sage. So obviously the first thing you need to sign up for Sage to get started, so you'll see in the description of this video, there's a link. If you click on the link, it will take you to a sign-up page. You're obviously going to put in your company details, accounting, South Africa, put your contact details, and just got to ask your favor. If you can just keep my referral code in there because I get some brownie points with Sage. If you're already signed up for Sage, then I'll show you in a second just where you can put in the referral code over there. You're going to press sign up, you're going to get OTP, once you get the OTP and you enter the OTP, then you will have access to Sage. So once you log in, let me maybe just close these two tabs, then you're going to get into your basic setup page or the or the business. I just set up one for SA County Network, just as a demo company, just to show you guys how to do the basics of how to get going quickly with Sage. Yeah, so first thing is under company. Um, we're going to first go to our company settings. I think that's probably the starting point if you want to get going on Sage. So you can see we've got our name in there, we've got our telephone number, obviously the details, you can enter your posted address because all this information will appear on your invoices and you need to put your name and that's really important as well. So that when you send out invoices so the people actually know who it comes from. So, so, so we're going to continue with the company details now. Um, so what else is important? I would normally go to customer zone and I would tick this box to say invoices and account history. So when your clients receive... Um, the emails or the invoices, then they would have access to, to, to this customer zone where, you can, where they can keep track of their account history with you. So that's important over there. General settings, I think over here, there's one important button you need to press on the customers and supply invoices. If you're just starting on, I'd like to tick this little box over here to see use account as default document in line item selection. So what happens is when, you, when you're working on Sage, you can either work with items or you can work with accounts. So if you're not buying and selling stuff, just use accounts, it just makes it a bit easier because you're taking one step away out of the accounting equation if you just select that little box here. So just something technical, something um, uh, nice to know. VAT settings, um, we for the, just in this demonstration, we're not going to work with VAT. If you are registered for VAT, you would have to press that button over there. Obviously, you're going to put your VAT number in there, but for this demonstration, we're not going to do that. So we're just going to leave that as it is. And I think the other important thing as well is branding. So here, we're just going to go and file the logo for our business. So there's my logo, logo saved. I'm going to put it there, and then I'm going to say... Uh, save. <clears throat> Let's quickly see if it saved my logo. Then we can just have a quick preview just to see what it looks like. Um, you'll see that that I've done a whole separate video about um, about this basic setup screen and probably about a 15 minute video where I go through every single tab of here and I discuss it in more detail. But I think for now we just want to just um, um, get it <clears throat> just going at least so we can just have a look and see so you can see this is then basically what it's going to look like you see so we're just going to be happy with that for now so i think in terms of the basic setup that's the important stuff so you must make sure you've got a company details in there um, and then under general settings make sure you're under custom and supply settings you tick that box make sure you could get your branding in there and make sure you got your bad settings right i think that's the most important thing you can maybe have a look around at your email signatures because this is the place where you put in your banking details and stuff which is going to appear on your invoices um yeah but like i said i've recorded a whole separate video on the basic setup like i said it's about a 10 minute or 15 minute video then it can take your time work through that a bit more in detail when you get a chance I think the important thing from here is to pop down to customers so I can show you guys how to do invoicing on Sage. So if I go to customers, yes, and once again, I've done a whole separate video on customers and customer invoices where I discuss this whole process that I'm going to shoot through now quickly, but in more detail. So if you want to go have a look at that video, it's on the channel, go check it out. So under customers, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to customer invoices, but you can see you've got a couple of options. You can go create customer quotes, sales orders, invoices, 
set up recurring invoices, credit notes, receipts, allocate receipts, all these things over here. Um, like I said, I've done a whole separate video, everything about this tab, so you can go check it out. But for what we want to do, just to get your cars going on stage, we're going to shoot down to customer invoices. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a customer invoice. And I was fiddling around just now, so this is a test one. But let's maybe add another invoice over here, so I can show you guys what happens. So now, at the moment, first place, add a customer. So this is the shortcut of how to add customers. There's a different place. If you go check the video under the customers, there's another place over there. So I'm just going to send the invoice out to myself and now I'm just going to put that in there. Now I think what's important is make sure that you have this little ticky box ticked over there to say allow customers to view invoices online. Make sure you've got an email address or at least you've got an email where they're where it's going to go to. I'm not sure why my computer populated that. <clears throat> but I think this is the basic stuff that you need. You obviously need to have a name to send it to. You have to have an email address in there. Well, I didn't save my email address. There we go. Let's just pop that. I mean, out there. So that's fine. So this is enough information that I need to create the invoice. And then we're going to say, you can see account. So you'll see that over here, you can see, select at the moment, it says other sales. I'm happy with it. You can go add another account over there, which is going to say consulting or whatever you want to call it. But generally, you can just, let's add one. Let's do it. So we're just going to call one and we're going to call it consulting. Because then I can show you quickly how to add a, a, add accounts as well. So you can see we're going to say it's a sales account. We're going to hit save. And then you can see that we're doing consulting. And I'm charging you guys 2000 for this consulting service. Now i got the button to press save, save a new print, preview, email, print delivery note. So normally by default you would actually just email it straight from here. And then your customer would receive it. But let's quickly have a look and see what the... What the invoice looks like. <clears throat> so this is then what it looks like. So you can see it's SA County Network, it says tax invoice. You can see this is the customer's details over here. Consulting 2000 Rand. Obviously, we're not that registered, so this is what it looked like. And remember that thing that I talk about the notes about the about the transactions, um, no, about the statement messages. So if you have banking details, then it would appear over here. Yeah, so then you can just press back, and then after that, you can either just save the invoice, send it. Maybe let's just email it through. So this is what it would look like. And then you can see it's going to go to Heinrich Tax 911. You can CC, BCC, and then this is the basic description that you've got. Here's a little cool button over here. So let's say, for instance, you work on a project or something like that, then you can actually go in and browse for a file. So if you did a big quote for somebody, then you can attach all the technical drawings and stuff to the invoice itself, and then that will go through together with the, <coughs> with the email. Um, so let's quickly see. Oh, so now they say functionality is not is disabled in free trial. But that is the theory that from here you'll be able to invoice it out. So I think this is the basics about customers. Like I said, I've done a whole separate video, but an important thing is just for you guys to be able to at least create the invoice. Obviously, we can't email it now, so by default you would normally have to download that invoice onto your computer. And then from there you write the email for the guy, attach the little file, and then you pop it off to them. But um, if you decide to subscribe or to, 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 to go for the paid subscription, then obviously you would have access to this. So I think just the other nice functionality and um, customer quotes, we can maybe have a look at quotes as well. So it basically works exactly the same as what the invoice screen is. So I'm going to say add quote. I'm going to quickly just do a quote for myself once again. I'm just going to say for Heinrich. And then from here, we're going to say that we want to do a quote. Let's go into consulting. And let's say, for instance, 5,000. <clears throat> so this is then what it would look like. I can once again print previous, save a new email through to my client. So once the quote is saved, then that guy maybe comes back and he decides that he wants to continue with the quote. Then on the right-hand side, you can see over there is the little button that says Create Invoice. So then you can change this quote into an invoice without having to retype the whole thing. So that, I think, is just to start off with the most important stuff that you need to know about customers. One other thing that's really, really cool. So if you go to customers and you go look at this report of your customer balances, days outstanding. This is a lovely report to look at because here you can see who owes you money for how long. So you can see that was my test customer that I did and this is the invoice that I created. So you can see that quotes and stuff doesn't appear there at that stage, you see. I think next one quickly, let's have a look at suppliers. <clears throat> so the once again, if you work with suppliers, one thing that I need to explain, normally when you work with suppliers, only load people here that you have accounts with. So if you're paying something only in 30 days time or 60 days time, then you load the supply invoices over here. If you work with stock, then if you buy a stock, then you would have to use the screen as well to get the stock onto the system. I've done a whole separate video 
on, on, on working with inventory and stock. So you can go check out that video. But let's maybe just do one quickly over here. <clears throat> I think uh, one that most people normally have is if you go, I'm just going to say once again, add supply. We're just going to say pay as you earn. Because remember, pay as you normally gets paid by the 7th of the next month. But it is a cost for the month that you're currently in, you see. So we're just going to say uh, under expenses, I think at the moment we only have salaries and wages. Let's just use that account. But by default, if it is pay as you earn, you would make an account for pay as you earn. And this depends on my pay as you earn for the month was 3,000 rand. And then I'm going to say save. <clears throat> so that is basically then how you would load supply invoices. Once again, I've done a whole separate videos on supplies and supply invoices. So you can go check that out. It's probably also about 10, 15 minutes, but then we go into more detail about all those type of things. And just the other important thing over here, if you go look at this report about supply and supply balances, days outstanding, then you can see that we at the moment pay as you earn 3,000 Rand. So we dealt with the customer's report, customer balances, days outstanding, who owes us money, and this is for the suppliers. I think next step from here, is to have a quick look at the banking and once again with the banking I've done a whole separate video so on each of these sections that I'm discussing you'll find that there's a complete different a whole video on this on this but for now I just want to just get you going on to say so you can get an idea of what it's about you see <coughs> banking if you go to your banking you're going to go to transactions and then you go to banking then this is the place where all the magic would happen with banking at the moment because it's a new company we don't have a bank account so I'm just going to add one of here we're going to say bank, <coughs> then just the bank name, we're going to call it bank. You can call it FMB or check account or whatever it is that you want to call it. And this is where the magic will happen when it will start processing. So let's say for instance, um, <coughs> with your banking, there's three different ways of how I can get your transactions into Sage. So the first one is if you manually catch your transactions, you'll see that once again, I've done a whole separate video on it, but I'm just going to give you a brief overview. So manually to catch your transactions, you would sit with a physical bank statement, capture all the data over onto Sage. So that's the first way. The second way is if you import data. So you can log into your banking and then you download a file which they call an OFX file. You take that file and import it into Sage and all the transactions will be there. Then you just need to do the allocations. The third one which we prefer is if you set up your bank feeds because then every day when you log into Sage, all the transactions from the previous day will be there automatically. So you just need to go do the allocations to say what it was for. But I'm going to just do it manually for now just to show you that just quickly how it works. <clears throat> so the first thing, let's say for instance a customer decided to pay. So let me just quickly get you to my description. I'm just going to say, Andre, you see over here where it says account, you've got a drop down. So now I can see whether it's account, whether it's a customer, supply or transfer. So let's maybe do my customer payment first. And Heinrich went, so now I've got to choose my customer. I'm going to say Heinrich paid and he paid 2,000 Rand. And then you'll see that on the right hand side with this little fork here over here, I can go allocate this payment to a specific invoice. So now I can say that Heinrich paid 2,000 Rand for that specific thing. Next thing, let's maybe say that we received interest income. So interest income, income. Then what we will do, remember we didn't create an invoice for, for, for interest income, so we're just going to leave it under account. And you'll see on this drop down over here, You've got all the different things or different accounts. You see, under, under, under other income, there's my interest received. So that's the one that I'm going to select, and I'm going to say I received a thousand rand. Now, when it comes to expenses, so let's say, for instance, we decided that we're going to pay, pay as you earn now, then we're going to choose on this drop down. Remember, we loaded the supply invoice for that, so we're going to choose supplier. Here, we're going to say pay as you earn, and we are paying. So now on the spend side, we're going to say three thousand. Once again on the little fork, we need to click that button over there to say that we're paying that supply invoice over there. Otherwise, it will show that that supply invoice is not paid if you don't press the little fork. And then on the next one, let's maybe do something in general. There's a princess like bank charges. So now, if I go to bank charges, and I go select it over there, and we paid this up into 300 Rand in bank charges. So you can see, this is how you would then basically capture the transaction. So you can see that we received 3,100 Rand, we paid out 3,300 Rand, and then that is where you would basically continue. So now I can see that your bank statement balance over the updates to minus 300 Rand. So if you're sitting with a physical bank statement in front of you, you need to make sure that your physical bank statement also shows that the balance is 300 Rand. So under banking, there's a couple of stuff that you can do. Obviously, there's the little screen. I've done a whole separate video on how to do bank reconciliations, 
bank feeds, how to set that up. <clears throat> the important thing over here, maybe to look at every now and then as your reports, and you can see um, this one over here that says bank and credit card transactions. So if I just look at this report over here, and the transactions that we captured is inside here. So you can see over there is our 1,000 rent that we received, our 3,000 and the 300 rent we expended, and then there's my customer payment. You can see that this is our customer or our bank statement balance is minus 300 rand. Yeah, so that is basically how you you would work with your banking. Um, like I said, I've done a whole complete separate video on that. And I think the last thing to do after that is maybe just to quickly look at the reporting. I think that's important. Let's quickly have a look. So we did customers briefly. We did look at suppliers. We did look at banking. I've got a whole separate video on, on, on items. Accounts we're not going to worry about at the moment, accountants area. So now if you go down to reports and management reports and I look at the profit and loss, then, um, and I want to look at my current month and you can see the transactions that we captured now. You can see there is our 2000 rand, which was my consulting. I did a test invoice just to get the system going. So there's a 1000 rand in there. Then you can see there's my 3000 rand total income. There is my expenses, there's uh, oh, the interest that we received, my 3,000 rand pays you in, and my 300 rand bank charges, so we're sitting with a 700 rand profit. The other report that we always need to keep an eye out as well is if you go to accountants, every report, and then you go to look at your balance sheet. Then you can see on your balance sheet over here, if I run the balance sheet for today, then it'll give me a snapshot of where my business is standing at the moment. So you can see we're sitting with trade receivables of a thousand rand, and that would basically be that test invoice that I created. So just to show you, if I go to customers reports and I go look at this one of your customer balance stays outstanding, and I just look at this report, you'll see that on today's date it will show that there's a thousand rand outstanding for this test customer that we created. So that is where that balance comes from. And you can see the profit this year for the year 700 rand. We're sitting with a bank overdraft of 300 rand. Because remember, we did pay that other supplier of us at 3,000 rand. So I think in a nutshell, in a very, very short nutshell, this is the basics about Sage. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's really not a difficult program. But as with anything, you guys need to spend time with it. And, like, as, I, and as I mentioned, that for every single part of this video over here, I've done a complete separate video on those sections as well. So... I think just to start off with, this is good enough just to get your guys going and just to be able to at least do invoicing, a little bit of banking, a little bit of supplier work. Um, but if you want to start using Sage on a more regular basis, then like I said, go check out those individual videos where I dive a little bit deeper into every single section. Remember once again, just to give the video a like, remember to subscribe to my channel and remember if it's possible, um, remember to just put my referral code in there as well so I can earn my brownie points with Sage as well. Thanks for watching. See you guys for the next video.